The Second World War impacted the careers of many footballers. Throughout the game, several players were made to put their career on the grass to one side to help the war effort. But no footballers did anywhere near as much of a U-turn with their lives as French footballer Alexander Villaplan. Villaplan had served as France's captain in the 1930 World Cup, but during World War II, he ended up betraying his country and collaborating with the Nazis, as well as being responsible for many deaths. This is a story of Alexandre Villaplan, the footballer who joined the Nazis. Alexander Villaplan was born in French Algeria on the 24th of December 1904. He moved to mainland France at the age of 16 to live with uncles on the south coast. His footballing ability was spotted by future Montpellier and Marseille manager Victor Gibson, who at the time was managing FC Sete. Villaplan quickly established himself as a regular before he even turned 18. He gained plaudits for his tough tackling and high energy and soon moved to Nîmes. Professionalism was banned in France at the time, and so the club offered him a fictitious role with a salary so that they could exploit a loophole in the ruling. He continued to impress, and in 1926, he had won his first international cap for France. Villaplan had become a household name, and although his illegal salary was meant to be kept a secret, he made no effort to hide it, often spotted splashing his money in bars and on horse racing. In 1930, Villaplan travelled with France to Uruguay for the first ever World Cup. After he led France out for their first game, a 4-1 win over Mexico, Villaplan described it as the proudest moment of his life. They would, however, not make it past the group stage. He joined Racing Club de Paris in 1929, before signing for FC Antibes three years later. Around this time, professional football in France had been legalised. Antibes would win the league in 1933, but was soon stripped of it when it emerged that they had been involved in match-fixing. Villaplan was strongly suspected to have been involved, but only received a small penalty. He was let go by Antibes and joined Nice. However, Nice would end up regretting this decision, as Villaplan often turned up late for training, disinterested in the game. Nice were relegated, and Villaplan was soon let go. In one last attempt to resurrect his career, he joined Hispano Bastiandine in the second tier, but by the end of the season, he was behind bars, having taken part in a horse racing scandal. His footballing career was over, and during the Second World War, his life would take a very different turn. In 1940, Nazi Germany took control of France, along with Belgium, Luxembourg and Holland. Some across France decided to take advantage of the situation and help the Nazis. A group called the Carlinge, known by many as the French Gestapo, was formed by French gangsters to collaborate with their occupiers. Villaplan met members of them in prison after he failed in attempts to seize Jewish-owned businesses. He would become a chauffeur to Pierre Bonny, one of the leaders of the French Gestapo, and later became head of one of the five sections of the North African Brigade. The purpose of this brigade was to find resistance members and take them out. Villaplan's unit was renowned for their cruelty. Upon interrogating a woman accused of harbouring a Jew, Villaplan used brutal interrogation methods, beating her up and then beating and setting alight two workers from a nearby farm in an attempt to get her to talk. He was seen by many as a sadist who felt genuine pleasure in inflicting pain on his victims. As Villaplan gained more power, his cruelty rose with it. On the 11th of June 1944, 11 resistance fighters, aged between 18 and 26, from the Musadan Commune in southwestern France, were rounded up by Villaplan's division. They were taken to a ditch, where Villaplan gave the order for their execution before pulling the trigger himself. Upon realising that Germany may not win the war, Villaplan desperately tried to save his own skin. He showed mercy to his victims and let them escape, but not out of pity, rather to avoid punishment at the conclusion of the war. These efforts were futile though, as Villapalm was already well beyond saving. In August 1944, France was liberated by the Allied forces. The members of the French Gestapo went on trial, with the full extent of their horrific cruelty put on show. Villapalm is reported to have laughed throughout the trial, until he was sentenced to death 
for being directly involved in 10 killings. On Boxing Day 1944, he, along with other members of the French Gestapo, was executed by firing squad.